I have to, a couple of things I want to do. I have to do something called arc length. I have to do uh, something called a comparison test. Um, uh, and then we're pretty much done. So I definitely will finish this week. I will start chapter seven on Monday, but it's so easy and it's more integrating. You won't, you won't mind. Okay. Uh, so the quiz two uh, is the integral of x squared e to the minus x dx. This one, uh, yeah, can be done by parts, can be done with a shortcut. What do you want to see? Do you want to see both? Do you want to see one or the other? Do you want to see the shortcut, right, Alex? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we can do both. Yeah. So I got to I got to use my Liate list to figure out my what I'm going to use for my use up. And it's algebra coming before uh the exponentials. Right? So I'm going to and I'm always picking whatever comes first to to be my use up. So u equals x squared. Um and because so if I'm doing the shortcut uh, I, I can start my table already. I need a sign, S-I-G-N. I need my U and I need my DV. The sign is always going to alternate positive to negative. U is going to go until it's the a final derivative is zero. So X squared to 2X to 2 to zero. And DV, right, I know that DV is everything left over whether I'm using the shortcut or not, sorry. Um, so, and I integrate to get V, I get the opposite of E to the minus X. I'm skipping that U sub there. Do you want to see that? Anybody want to see that? That was the first homework problem, I think, that you turned in, right? And you all got it right. So I'm assuming you can see that U sub and do it that quick. That's a calc one piece. You don't have to show me that U sub, okay? Um, so I'm starting here with, with V, so it's a little bit, and this is my own table version of it, okay? So I'm starting with V, so, so this column is DV, but I got to integrate to get V, and I got to keep integrating, and it's going to just bounce between positive and negative. So I get my final answer from the, the product of the row. And then the sum of those products, so so tick, tack, toe. If you watch the if you watch the movie uh, Stand and Deliver, James James Earl, almost James Edward, yes, James Edward almost is a math teacher in California. <laughs> he he does he does a different version of tick, tack, toe in it. Um, he actually got all these uh, really poor kids to get through all the way math to get through the A-B test, uh, a famous story. Um, and every year he got more and more students to do it. Uh, it was pretty cool, pretty cool story. So, Lou Diamond Phillips is in it too. So the green is, is, is that the highlight to the Yeah, I'm just getting that whole row. So, so, so my answer, right? So if I call this thing star here, I can say that star is now positive x squared times a negative, right? I, I'll put the, I don't need to skip that. I can skip a step here. Negative x squared e to the minus x minus 2x e to the minus x minus 2 e to the minus x plus c, right? And and then of course we could, we could simplify it. Anytime you can make it look a little prettier, that's good. I'm going to take out uh, a negative e to the negative x, and I have what x squared plus 2x plus 2 left, and there it is. And we usually put that constant first, so you don't have to write an extra sign, S I G N. So there's my shortcut. Be careful, right? Be careful. Like if you had the integral of x ln of x, and you say, oh, well, x is u, and then one and then zero, I can do the shortcut here, but it doesn't work uh, because, right, look at my Liate list, I need to pick ln first. 
So, so just be careful of it. Don't jump to the gun if you think you have something that you can just do a quick shortcut with. All right, so by parts, very similar, right? Uh, so I've got the integral of x squared e to the minus x dx. I already figured out u. Morning. I'm recording. I got du 2x dx. I know that uh, dv is e to the minus x dx. And I've already figured out that v is negative e to the negative x. So it's kind of the same process. Right? I can just finish the rest of it quickly if I can do a shortcut. But So here, uh, I've got to do uv, so uh, negative x squared e to the minus x, minus the integral of v du. Right? So I've got a double negative there. I've got a 2, and I've got an x e to the minus x dx. So I did all that, that simplifying in my head. You don't have to do that. You can put it on the paper. You tend to, we tend to not make as many mistakes if, we, if we're writing things down like in baby steps. Uh, but pretty clear that I have to do by parts again, right? So brand new problem here. U is x. Du is 1 dx. Uh, dv is e to the minus x dx. Right, so v is again minus e to the minus x. So now I'm just, and watch what I do here. Right, I'm doing negative x squared e to the minus x plus 2 times. I'm going to put my new biparts in that set of parens. Right, so the new biparts is what? Negative x e to the minus x, right? V, e, u, v uh, minus the integral of v du, so plus the integral of e to the minus x dx, right? I took care of that double negative, and that's a simple integral, and usually that's what happens. I try not to let it go to more than <laughs> by parts twice, okay? Um, so what do I have here? Negative x squared e to the minus x, oops, plus 2 times negative x e to the minus x, and then a minus e to the minus x, right? I've done that one so many times now, I don't really need to think about it that much. Um, and you can see I have all negatives, right? I have all negatives. Uh, so, but obviously I get to the same answer I, I just did. So let me, because I'm lazy, I won't. Yeah, see, see previous problem. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Yeah, see, see my homework. Yeah. See my homework. <laughs> cool. So, uh, right. Looking at uh, looking at the the exam. Um, so number four, I say do it by parts, right? And power reduction, and then number seven is is by by parts as well. Um. I also like to, I'd like to give you, like if you look at, and I don't have pages, pages numbered here, but if you look at the first quiz I had, oh no, it's not the first quiz. So there's a quiz 5-5, five five. there's a quiz, another quiz 5-5, five five. that's a U sub. And then quiz 5-6 is by parts, right? So I, I do like to give you a problem by parts and then have you find the actual answer and then do it with a Simpsons rule. So you'll, you'll see that happening on another test and you'll see that happening on a final.
Uh, so, but today we're doing, um, oh, there is another exam there, right after the last quiz. Uh, I, put, I, I accidentally put a, another exam in there, but I, I didn't give you the solutions yet. Uh, but I like this one. This is the most recent one. Uh, so that so I gave you two midterm exams and all the quizzes. You see the second midterm exam? It doesn't say anything on it. It starts with Simpson's rule for x sine x. Ten problems. Yes, you see it? Yeah, just, just put, put a mark right on top of that that's another midterm exam and I'll get you solutions. But you certainly can start it. You can start working on it. I mean, the material is, is difficult enough that I don't have to give you super tricky problems. Right? All you got to do is prove to me that you can integrate anything I give you, and then I know you're ready for Diffie Q's. Uh, why are we, what about my computer scientists? Uh, well, you are going to differentiate and integrate in linear. Very little, okay? But uh, I really would think it's restricted to Calc 1 material. But we still want you, uh, um, well, I mean, why are we doing it to you? I don't, I don't know really. It could just be a weed out process, <laughs> right? We're just saying, hey, if you can't do calc one, calc two, yeah, I think you'll find linear is easier than calc two. Um, then maybe you should be a hacker, is what we're saying, right? I'm not saying you can't be a computer scientist, or maybe you're just a creative person and you're going to go create some software, right, and make millions of dollars. So. Anyway, let me do the first quiz. I was worried, but it looks like almost everybody everybody got this first integral of ln of x all over x dx, right? And then my second integral of x over square root of 1 minus x squared. Doesn't that look like something, that second integral? What do you see there? A trig sub. So the kind of question would be is like, well, can I do this that second one with a trig sub and still get the same result? We'll see. So um, so two different integrals here, right? Hashtag and star. And, and by the way, all the homework is always due on Monday. Homework will always be due on Monday, right? And then quiz every day. Um, so, so let's just work on hashtag here, right? And it's pretty clear that I have. Remember my d, my u sub list is. I could have a whole function as u. I could have the inside as u. I could have the entire downstairs as u. I could do some u sub and have some leftover x, right? Those are my four levels of of u sub that I I want to be looking at. But this one is, this one is pretty simple. Uh, right with u equal ln of x and du is 1 over x dx so I just have u du or u squared right over 2 plus c and then I want to just be careful of it, it should look like like a sine squared that notation so you could do ln squared of x uh, or you could do ln of x quantity squared that's fine too that one's a little clunky, but it's perfectly accept acceptable. But you really got to be seeing that it's ln of x times ln of x, right? So that's that first piece. And then the second piece, um, sorry, I've got a negative uh, x over square roots of 1 minus x squared dx. And so u is going to be my inside. du is negative 2x dx. So I need a negative 2 and another negative 1 half. So I'm getting 1 half of the integral of 1 over square roots of u du. Everyone okay there?
right? So this is just a power rule. I've got a u to the minus one half. I'm adding one and dividing by that new power, right? So I obviously get square root of one minus x squared. And a couple of you had an extra coefficient out there on the quiz. I mean, just try and clean that stuff up, right? So our whole our whole problem I'm calling star, and of course that's just uh, ln of it, ln squared of x over x over two, sorry, uh, plus the square root of one minus x squared plus c. And I when I'm doing these things, right? in pieces, I, I don't have to worry about the constant of integration till the end. So those were the two quizzes I gave you. Yes? Daniel, you need a bigger picture or you got it? It's okay? So I'll get them graded uh, for tomorrow, including the quizzes today. We're going to do a power, uh, uh, sorry, yeah, trig power and a trig sub, okay? So number four is interesting to look at on this on this packet for trig powers, right? And on on this one, I ask you to do it by parts and by power reduction. Um, and again, you have you have your power reductions on your formula sheet, right? You don't have to memorize them, or you can get a tattoo if you really love it that much. What am I really stressing on? If you look at, I'm sorry, the back of page one, two, three, back of page four, do you see my power reduction for cos squared? It's right before the trig integral on number five, right? Do you see the power reduction for cos squared? What's the thing I'm stressing is what happens to the, the coefficient of x when I go to my power reduction? It doubles, right? So that's, that's the thing you have to remember. Anytime you use that power reduction, the power reduces, right? But the coefficient uh, of, of the argument doubles. The angle doubles, better yet, right? Okay, anything you want me to do from homework, from book, from web assign, from Shams, from Paul's notes, anything you want me to do. And, and, and then why don't you want me to do anything? Why? Because someone tell me, just lie to me if you want, but you're getting everything right. Is that why you don't want me to do anything? You're getting everything right? Yeah, uh, what, what, what page? Nice. Nice. Yeah, and, and they're, they're feeding me the U sub, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to get you to think about what, what, you know, how you can look at this particular triangle. So I've got 1 over x square root of 9 plus 4x squared dx. And I clearly see 3 squared plus 2x quantity squared, right? I can, I can rewrite this. I've got a 3 squared plus a 2x quantity squared, right? So I can see a squared plus b squared. So I know instantly that that is my hypotenuse, right? Teddy, you, you're with me on that, right? Because right so I, I'm looking for either a squared plus b squared or c squared minus b squared right I'm looking for a hypotenuse or a leg and it's that positive piece that's telling me what I have so I know this particular piece is uh, 9 plus 4x squared and like I said I want you to keep the x term 
as the height or the hypotenuse. Well, the hypotenuse is already taken care of, so I had no choice but, but for the x term to be the height. And then I, I'm trying to make that last side as simple as I can. Does it really matter? No. Only thing that matters is the hypotenuse is in the right spot. Otherwise, I'm just going to get a sine instead of a cosine, right? And what's the big deal if you get a sine instead of, if you get a cosine instead of a sine? When you take your when you do your dx, I'm going to get a positive cosine or a negative sine, and that's all I'm doing is taking out those negatives. They end up canceling anyway in the long run, but uh, so uh, so. But here it is. So it looks like I need, I need for sure, I need an x, right? But all I have is a 2x and a 3, but I need an x in the problem, right? You see, I need an x in the problem. So, so I'm taking what I can from the triangle. So 2x over 3, that's my tangent, right? And so then x is 3 halves of the tangent of theta. There's, there's other ways to do this and, and get creative about it. Um, um, so like, for example, and, and don't, don't bother doing this if you don't want to, but I, I, I see I, I need a 2x so I can make the 2x happen right away. You see what I mean? I, so I can, I can manipulate my original problem to make it fit my triangle better, or I can just let the triangle be, and that's, that's my choice is is just let it let it be as it is and then work on it so i need a dx i got my x now but i need a dx right and so dx is what three halves secant squared theta d theta so i need this piece i need this piece I need one more piece, square root of 9 plus 4x squared all over 3. I want to pick this easiest piece of it that I can. Uh, and that's got to be what, a cosine? No, I'm sorry, a secant. So I know that that guy is 3 times the secant of theta. Now look at what Sean said, right? Look at what Sean said to do in number 4. It says, let x be 3 halves tangent of theta, right? So, so they're just giving you that first step. I, I don't, I don't, yeah, I, th I think it's better for you to be able to create the whole thing from the beginning. If you're doing these problems without a triangle, you got to tell me what you're doing. Because I don't know what the hell you're doing. <laughs> I can't, I can't do it without a triangle. Um, right, even they're writing a triangle, right? And the key is because I want to convert back to x at the end. All right, so now I'm ready to sub in, right? Everybody okay with this? This would be a quiz tomorrow. Uh, oh, no, today, right? Yes, today. Yeah, sorry. So I've got the integral. Uh, my dx is now what? Um, 3 halves secant squared theta d theta. Uh, the x is 3 halves tangent of theta. I like that. And then uh, my square root is 3 secant theta. Right? So I'm just putting those pieces in to my integral. So uh, obviously one of the secants cancel. Right? So I have secant uh, theta over tan theta. Uh, so I don't, I'm going, uh, well, I, I want to go back to my trig class or my pre calc class where I was doing those identities. I turned everything into sines and cosines and simplified as much as I can. Right? So what do I have here? I have uh, reciprocal of tan is what? Cosine theta over sine theta and then I have uh, I have my secant which is 1 over cos theta right yep so the cosines cancel and I'm really just dealing with cosecant 
Now, on my formula sheet, I've got the derivative of a cosecant there. Okay? But, like, if you were in my Calc 1 class, two of you, uh, Noah and Brian, I didn't test you on antiderivative of a cosecant, right? Um, and there's a little trick to it. So I guess I should teach you the trick now, right? Um, so what I do is just a, a quick side note is cosecant of theta is cosecant of theta times 1 and the version of 1 I'm going to use is is kind of in my uh, it's in my answer it's cosecant minus cotangent so I'm doing cosecant of theta times cosecant theta minus cotangent of theta over itself. And these are this is one of the tricks that you just kind of have to adopt. The same trick is going to happen in that secant cubed uh, problem. Okay, there's a secant cubed problem in the trig integrals that I'd like you to try. It's very tricky. Okay, it's very tricky and it involves a trick like this. So look at what happens upstairs, though. I get a cosecant squared, right? And then I get a cosecant cotangent. Well, what, what is the derivative of cotangent? Cosecant squared. It's negative cosecant squared. And what's the derivative of cosecant? Negative cosecant cotangent. And you see, that's what I have when I distribute upstairs. Right? You with me? So now I have one-third of the integral. Downstairs I have cosecant theta minus cotangent theta. And upstairs I have cosecant squared theta minus cosecant theta cotangent theta. So, so meaning I have u, downstairs is u, upstairs is du, right? Yep. So I have u as cosecant theta minus cotangent theta, and then du is what? Derivative of cosecant is minus cosecant cotangent. I got that. Derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared, but the du double negative gives me a positive. I mean, it's like, who the hell would think of this, right? But we're, we're, I'm not saying I'm a genius and I can, I can come up with this stuff from nowhere, right? But I'm saying I could remember things from my teacher, right? And that's, we want, we want you to start there. Say, hey, well, maybe I can multiply by something to, to, right, to make this work. And you just got to, you kind of have to remember those little tricks. So I've got, what, one-third of the ln of the absolute value of the downstairs, right? So, I, I, Ryan, I'm assuming everything is okay until that last answer. Like, how the hell did they get that last answer, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so so I got the you're okay with the triangle? Yeah. Yes. So so now I'm 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 highlighting the pieces I want to replace. So I see an X. The only thing I have on my triangle is a two X, so I take it. So two X over three, you use the other side, figure out what trig that is, solve for X. I need a DX. So take the derivative. I need the square root, right? I need the square root, but I want to keep it. I have to use two sides from my triangle to get a trig. So I use the simpler side, and 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 then I. So so you can kind of see I've got three pieces in green that I have to substitute for. I'm trying to change my variable from x to theta, right? 
Once I do that, again, I could have a real simple trig thing to, to do, or I could have to do one of these tricks. We've seen a couple of tricks so far, right? There was that same trick. There was a different trick over here where I had to use an identity there. What? Uh, no, what problem was that? Uh, but you, Alex, you said you did the same problem? The one that Noah was doing this morning? Yeah, it looks familiar. I think it was one you did in class. So, so, and I did, yeah, I did one like just like this in class as well. Um, I, I, I want to say it was the other one though, instead of uh, the cotangent, it was a, it was a tangent or something. But like for me, I I'm probably writing that whole problem on my formula sheet. You can put anything you want on there, okay? Any problem you want on there. And then I'm hoping, so these tricky ones, I might put the whole problem on my formula sheet. Or I might just remind myself of, of you know, what I could look for. Look at that seek and cue problem, because that's one just like this. It's in the textbook, right? Or I'm just remember going to remind myself sine squared plus cos squared is 1, and then if I need a cotangent squared or a tangent squared, I can get it, right? Or seek and squared, or, yeah. I Go ahead. Oh, okay. So I'm not done yet, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no problem. So I've got I it, it, this is a this is a horrible kind of problem, but I can get some algebra for the cosecant and I get some algebra for the cotangent, right? So so uh just going to remind myself of this triangle, 2x and 3 and uh 9 plus 4x does 4x squared, right? So cosecant is going to come from this piece. So I have one third times the ln of the absolute value of the square root of 9 plus 4x squared all over 2x minus cotangents coming from 3 over 2x. Sorry, 3 over 2x, yeah. So obviously, uh, I can take out that 2, it's positive. Right? And I've got square root of 9 plus 4x squared minus 3 all over x. And I can't, I can't take out the x because it, yeah, but they have to take one third of, uh, of just x. Of just x, yeah. Could be a typo. Or it could just be me making a silly mistake. No, it's it's definitely a uh, it's definitely a one sixth. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let me let me see if I can think about how it could be something different than that. I cannot. It would be fine to have a two over two x, a so one third times the LNL all over all of that over two x would be fine. Yeah, yeah. I think they just left it out. They don't. They don't bother with it. Uh, you will start seeing it happen in diffy cues. That's why I'm putting it in. So I, 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 I want you to be conscious of can this inside be negative? And what they're saying is, well, just make my make my domain what I'm allowed to put in it. So, uh, um, but we we want that that possibility of using the positive value or the negative value. So that's why we need the absolute value on there. Um, and we, you remember we did all that do horrible domain stuff in pre-cal? Remember where we had, we had you figuring out the domain uh, using a sign table? You remember doing that? You would factor everything and put the factors in and then find the critical values of where it's zero, where it's Right? Uh, yeah, where it's undefined, and then you can figure out the domain of this. Um, 
hopefully we, we're done with that. We know you know how to do it, but. Cool, that's, that's a good one to ask. And, and you, what you need to do, Ryan, is you need, to, you need to find as many problems as you can and just check your triangle. Just do a bunch of triangles and see if they're matching up and then do, finish a couple all the way, right? Because the issue right now, right, is you're having a disconnect with the triangle. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah but you're creating the triangle correctly, but then you got to put it, yeah. right, that piece. That's what you got to practice. And that's fine. That's, that's a good place to be right now. Cool. What else? Yeah, and I know I know time is the issue. So I know I know you, you might be working, or you, you you know you you got family things you have to do, or whatever, right? So so from one day to the next, it's not easy. We're at a good point right now in that nothing I'm adding is difficult. We've got two things to add, something called a comparison test and and an arc length. Okay, so we only have two things to add. So it's a good time for you to try and just say, tonight I'm going to do trig integrals, trig subs. Uh, tonight I'm going to do improper integrals, right? I want to see how many I can find that diverge. How many, how many in the book diverge? How many in the book converge? Right, and so you know, looking at looking at the graph is huge on those, and then doing the integrals on on Desmos is is great. It's it's nice. It's nice. It's going to be nice to know you're right or wrong. The key is that you don't panic if you're wrong. Right, that's that's the most important thing. If you go do that integral on on Desmos and you get uh, a negative one, and and when you did it by hand, you got divergent, right? Well, what are you going to trust, right? What are you going to trust? Um, so I think the comparison test will help with this to know whether it's convergent or divergent without even doing the integral. So we'll talk about that today. But So I'm probably going to trust Desmos. I'm going to double check that I typed it right because that happens all the time. I double check that I have the right problem. <laughs> right? Because that happens all the time. And then I'm going to take my version of it on a brand new, I'm going to look at my, my page that I said divergent on, but I'm going to, I know from my life that we're kind of blind to our mistakes, right? Whether it's in a relationship or whatever, right? And then you realize afterwards, oh shit, yeah, I should have, I should have treated her nicer, right? But then, um, but then, then I'm going with a brand new relationship. I'm starting over. <laughs> and, and I'm going to keep in mind the mistakes I, I tend to make, right? Um, so, and then do the problem over. And there should be plenty of time. On the quizzes, I, I, I feel, I'm, I'm pretty sure you felt like you had enough time. Uh, on the test, I don't mind staying a little bit later, but I think 10 minutes of problem is, is reasonable. And that's the other thing you might have to do. You might have to set your timer on your phone or your if you have an egg timer on the kitchen. Set it for 10 minutes and do a problem, right? Set it, set it for 10 minutes and, and do number four, where I've got to do cos squared x, that integral, by parts and with a power reduction. The power reduction should take no time at all. All right, what else do you want me to do today? Uh, so, so far, the only thing you can't do on this exam is the arc length. We'll, we'll talk about that today or, or, and or tomorrow. Um, and then the Simpsons rule, I had the error on it then, but I was torturing students then and trying not to torture anyone anymore. But what's nice about sine, if you remember, I remember I did the fourth derivative. I did the fourth derivative to find the bound. So I'm either going from sine to cosine plus or minus, right? 
So at the end, it's always going to be about a bound of one, right? So no matter how many times I take the derivative of a, a sine or a cosine, I'm still going to have a max height of one, right? Um, I am not putting the error on your exam for a quiz, okay? Nice, that's good. I, I like an hour of, of questions, you know, even though I did some from the, the quiz because I didn't get it graded, but I still, I like that. Just so you get, you, I want you to know that you can have things answered, that you can see it, and then you, you still have to remember to go do it again. Don't look at anything. Just do the problem again, right? That's going to be key to, for you to, to, to be able to do well uh, on, on a test. Let us do a quick recap here of, of our shell method, disk method, right? So we'll do a shell method, disk method. We'll try and do a couple of diff difficult ones. Uh, then we'll take a break. Um, uh, and then we'll, we'll look at comparison tests today. I think that's back to improper integrals. Um, the comparison test, it takes a big part in chapter eight, okay? So I introduce it in, in chapter six. I didn't even ask about it here, right? Um, I think on the other midterm, there might be a comparison test on it. No. Oh yeah, number four, the comparison test. Yeah, so we'll talk about that. Okay, sorry. Let's go back to shell and disk, right? Um so I got, I got, I, I, I meant to give you some more shams. I, I don't want you to get overwhelmed. Um, uh, but I've got improper integrals in here. I've got uh, volumes of revolution, and I, I will tell you this: their their version of how to explain it is is quite different than mine. So I'm I'm worried about. Uh, us doing that, but yeah, it looks it looks a little nasty. Let me go to the textbook. Uh, let me let me just do one I like to do first of all. That's that sounds even better. So uh, let's take a look at um, our cosine curve, right? Um, and let's take this particular piece from 0 to pi over 2. And let's rotate that about negative uh, 1. So I want the area of the cosine curve. And you want it. You want to be thinking about the bounds here, right? You can you can see it's y equals cos of x, right? What's another bound? Y equals what? What line? Yep, y equals zero. That's the x-axis, right? And x equals zero, right? So when you go to graph it, 
you, you could see a couple of regions, right? So you have to you have to be conscious of which region are we talking about, um, and 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 sometimes that's the hardest part. I don't think it's hard with Desmos. If you had your your dinosaur calculator, TI whatever, it, it, sometimes it's harder to see what's really going on. And so we want the volume, right? So f find the volume. <coughs> of the shaded region um, about y equals negative 1. So I didn't tell you, is this a shell or a disk, right? Uh, typically, <laughs> excuse me, I do. <coughs> uh, I got to quit smoking. I'm joking. Um, so, um, but you know, once you've drawn your axis of revolution, right, you've got a choice of perpendicular to the axis or parallel to the axis. In this particular case, if you haven't noticed already, um, when I'm perpendicular to the x-axis or any y equal line, I can use the function as it is, right? I don't have to convert it to x equal. It's already a y equal. So, so that's something to, to be conscious of. Please make sure you find a problem that you can do with both methods and verify that you get the same answer. Uh, oftentimes, I will ask you to do both methods on one particular function on, on the exam or a quiz, right? I tend to keep those algebraic, okay? Square root of x, y equals x, that kind of thing. Because it's just about manipulating to show you get the same result. This one, of course, is very difficult because if I had a solve for x, I'd have an arc cosine, right? Not that that's difficult uh, to deal with in terms of integrals, um, depending on which method it is, though, okay? So what method are we doing? Yep. So this is a disk, but and it turns out to not be a disk. It's going to be a washer, right? Because you can see that I take that particular area and rotate it about x equal, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna ghost out to here, right? This is a uh, y equals negative one, right? And so. It's a it's that big weight underneath the table in the backyard, you know, for the flat for the, the what the hell is that thing umbrella? You see that giant weight turned sideways? Yes. So it's a big solid piece with an open cylinder in the middle for the flagpole, right? For the umbrella pole. Not that my drawing is great, but the key. <laughs> The key here is where my rectangle was is where my cross, I want my cross section, right? So imagine just cutting out that strip and then clearly you're going you're gonna to see the washer, right? I think I can, I can put my radius on here. Remember, I want to go to the top of my rectangle all the way to the axis of revolution, always thinking that I have to do upper minus lower or right minus left. So my big radius, right, is what? It's, it's cosine, the top of it is cosine, right, and then minus, one, uh, minus the axis of revolution, so minus a negative one plus one. And if you if you really think of that that height, I definitely if I'm starting here, I'm definitely going up one and then up to the cosine curve. So you definitely can see the plus if you if you look back at it. But I'm thinking always upper minus lower. So cosine minus a negative one, cosine plus one. And then of course the little radius is easy, right? It's zero minus a negative one or just one.
Yes, you agree? So all those thoughts, the rectangle, the upper minus lower, the right minus left, those are all the things I think you need to have in order to do any of these problems. All right, so we've got a volume of pi. Now I'm going in terms of x, and I already know my x is moving from 0 to pi over 2, right? And I've got uh, my big radius squared uh, minus the little radius squared dx. So cos of, cos of x plus 1 squared uh, minus 1 squared. I'm just always conscious of you see I, where I put those square parentheses in because I want the dx to apply to everything, right? The, uh, so again, my operator is weird in this case. It's like it's like a bookends. The integral with the dx tells me what to do with that middle piece. So I don't I don't want them separated, right? Without parentheses if they're multi-term. Even though I would know what you want and know what you mean and et cetera, et cetera. Um, okay, so a little bit of work. Let's race. I gotta check my formula sheet. <laughs> Yay. This is a, a really exciting part of the recording.
Anybody get there? 2 pi plus pi squared over 4. Brian, yeah? Nice. Let me see. Yeah, so, 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 cos plus one times the square root of two terms, right? Minus one square root of one term. Anybody, anybody get to there? Anyone get to that? The evaluation piece may be wrong. Yeah. So, so. Yeah. So, so. I, I, I got a couple students still working. Is that correct? Yeah. So let me let me give a couple more minutes and I'll I'll go through it. And it could be me. I make mistakes. Yeah. It's just our, our strategy when we're taking our test is a little different, right? Then we're, we're when we're doing things like this because we want to do something and then double check it, right? Do something then double check it. And of, of course, I'm going to check it all on the calculator, right? You found it? Nice. Yeah, so you're right in pi over fours and pi over twos. It's so easy to get distracted and, <laughs> or you're thinking you're going to write a pi over four and, right, your, your brain is thinking four and then somehow you just put a four down.
Yeah, so if you see here, and when I'm going to check myself, I don't want to, I want to take my original integral, because I may have made an algebra mistake, right? So I take my original rule over here and put one square in the And then I put my answer in the All right, look at my process, okay? And you don't have to do things the way I do them. Um, and you know I'm impatient. I'm, I'm trying. I go way too fast. I drive too fast too. So, uh, but we we set up our our piece, and I start manipulating. So I'm foiling and simplifying, right? I got that piece. Anybody get there? Anybody get there? Nice. And then I'm splitting into two integrals right away, right? I know I'm doing good. I'm going to do my co squared and then my my cosine. And I I know the cosine antiderivative instantly so I do that one quickly right so so you can see here I've moved from um, this piece down to this piece right and I left the other one alone or I could do that hashtag and star or all, all of that whatever you want to do uh, I, I evaluate at pi over 2 I evaluate at 0 and I did I also did this piece of the integral because I know that one too quickly and so you can see here, all that's left over is this integral. And then I'm doing a, doing a u sub there. Uh, so I'm kind of chipping away at each piece as I go. You don't have to do that. Again, do, do it as you wish. Um, and I, I'm, as soon as I put in something with a zero, I know it's gone. Like I know when I put that zero in, it's gone. So I'm not even bothering with it most of the time. Um, but I do this u sub, right? u is 2x, so du is 2dx. So I need that extra 2 inside, I need a 1 half outside. So there's where my pi over 4 is coming from. Cos, antiderivative of cos of u is sine of u, so there's sine of 2x. And it's nice when I, when I evaluate both of those at pi over 2 or 0, I get 0. So, so there's my volume. So I probably did it in 11 steps, and maybe you, you should have done it in 18 if you missed a piece of it, right? But just be organized. Use lots of paper, okay? Don't have to save paper. Um, when you're doing homework, you can always use a bunch of paper and then rewrite it and condense it. And, and when you're doing the test, there's nothing wrong with asking for more paper and then, you know, Make sure you have a nice final version of it there. Uh, so just as you as you test more, you'll you'll get better at it, right? Yeah, yeah, it happens. It happens, and you you can really uh, you know you can always have your handheld calculator when you're working, and if you want to put in sine of pi over two, no no big deal. It's nothing wrong with double checking yourself. On a calculator, right? Say again. Exactly. Exactly. How many of you are going to have the unit circle on your formula sheet? <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, let's do another, let's do one with a shell. Um, oh, let me say this. Let me get the area so let me take ln of x and e and about the y-axis. So um, find the volume bounded by uh, y equals ln of x, y equals 0, x equals 1, and x equals e, right? So we see that particular piece there.
and uh, of course the ghost right we're gonna have an outside solid piece and then inside the top of a funnel looks like right about the y-axis thank you Yeah, about the about the y-axis. Yeah. So on this one, I certainly could go disk method, and that's not a problem because what's the right if I if I chose that rectangle and I and I'm not going to, but if I chose that particular rectangle, the right hand edge is E. The left hand edge of my rectangle is not y equals ln of x, but x equals e to the y. Right? When I'm when I'm doing this one, my you can see my delta y, right, the narrow part of the rectangle is is, is along the y axis. I'd have to switch everything. So I could do that. That's a good one for you to do. Uh, but I'm gonna do parallel and do shells. Well, you can see uh, that one soda can cross section I get right from that rectangle, and you, you remember that shells are uh, two pi r's, right? Shells are uh, my perimeter instead of the volume. I'm sorry, the area. So I know I need a two pi times the integral of uh, and where am I? Where, what height am I going to here? I'm going to when ln and and right and x equal e cross. So that's ln of e. That's one. Make sure you agree with me there. Exactly. So since I'm doing this in in terms of oh no wait I'm doing it in terms of Oh, in terms of x, so I, I'm sorry, mis my mistake. I'm going from 1 to e. <laughs> How far from my axis of revolution to the rectangle is my radius, and that's x. And then the height of the rectangle is simply ln of x. Make sure you agree with me there, because the setup is, setup is difficult. But this is a typical problem I like, because this is by parts. Right? This one's, this one's by parts, so that's... That's my game. I'm telling you. I'm telling you my all all my secrets. I'm gonna have you do something that's gonna turn into an integral of, of one of our methods. Then you have to do that process, right? And, and then find the volume. So chapter six is nice because I I can ask chapter five inside of chapter six questions, and then I've never killed one bird, but I get to kill two birds with one stone, kind of thing. Good. So we're okay with the setup. We all agree. It's nice and it's good for you to get in the habit of, of making sure you agree with this particular piece. So yeah, yeah. Uh, from x to y? Yeah, so the, yeah, so so in this particular one, I drew my rectangle parallel to my axis, and I want to look at the narrow part of the rectangle. That narrow part of the rectangle is on the x-axis, right? So it's a dx, which means my bounds have to be on the x-axis as well. Yes, if I did the other one, I would have to switch to y, right? And, and in fact, we could even look at that if you want, right? If I do this one, this is x equals e. This is x equals e to the y is the curve, right? Yeah, I'm going from 0 to 1. Make sure we agree with that. And you can see the narrow part of my rectangle is, 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 is connecting to the y-axis, right? So I, here I get a volume of 2 pi times the integral of 0 to 1. 
what's the distance to my rectangle is a y, right? And then the the height the 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 length of the rectangle is what e minus e to the y. So those two, those two pieces should give me the same answer. Look at, look at the difference, right? If I'm, if I'm doing it in terms of dx, and how do I know it's dx? Because the narrow part of the rectangle is on the x-axis. I want my bounds to be on the x-axis. If I'm going in terms of y, because the narrow part of my rectangle is hitting the y-axis, I'm doing my bounds in terms of the y-axis. And that's nice too. That's by parts too. Do you see the y e to the y? So the y e to the, e to the y there will change. It'll also be a uh, by parts. All right, let's do this one. Let's race. And be careful here. By parts, uh, you should be ln, right? Yeah, x squared, x squared, oh. No, 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 yeah, x squared over 2, right? Oh, um. So, are you talking about right here? Yes, but that one is VDU, right? The integral of VDU, so x squared over 2 divided by x is x over 2. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Thank you for double checking me. That green that green circle is my my uh, antiderivative, right?
So kind of just checking to see if anybody's gotten there. Yes, when I did when so when you did your by parts, you got there before you evaluated, right? Yeah, we do. Anybody, anybody get to pi over 2? The second uh, exam I gave you is my more recent one. Just so you know, your test is probably going to look more like that second exam. I think I put it somewhere after the quizzes. I don't have solutions there yet, but if you can look at that one, right, it's that one page starting with Simpson's rule and it's got 10 questions on it. Um, number seven is the problem we just did. So that's that's a nice one to to do um, over the weekend. Number seven, number eight, number nine, they're all related. If if I'm asking ten questions, right? How many shell problems can I give you? Right? If I'm asking ten to twelve questions, how many shell problems? I can't give you three shell problems. Right? So I'm thinking probably one disk problem, one shell problem, like, like seven and eight here, like eight and nine here. Yeah. So shell problem, a disk problem, an area between curves problem, an arc length. There's chapter, there's chapter six. And then think about chapter five. Well, I've got to do Simpson's rule. I've got to do, uh, uh, improper integral so there's there's already right there's already seven problems or so I've only got five left to ask you straight integral problems from chapter five five six five seven five yeah five 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 six five seven right so you you want to be thinking about what the hell is going to be on the test especially if I give you old exams right so I really like that second one better than the first one I might have one more too. Yes. Yes. Yep. I had what square root Um you're probably right. Uh oh, minus the integral of VDU. Did you do minus the integral of VDU? Oh Yes. And and so that that particular mistake is a one is if each problem is ten points, it's one off. Right? But you're gonna catch it. When are you gonna catch it? When you go do your Desmos, right? Say again. Ln of one is zero. Right? And you, you can kind of see that right on my on my curve of my ln curve, right? ln of 1 is on the axis. Noah, do you need pictures from no, the no. beginning? You're okay? Yeah. Okay.
Yeah, pi over 2 all times 1 plus e squared. How do we do? We get there? We get there? Nice. 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 Teddy? No? Where Do you see where your, where your issue was? Okay. Nice. Daniel? There's only seven of you. You can't hide from me, damn it. Okay. Mistake or are you okay? You got it? Yeah, you, you, yeah. And so remember, you're you're going to check this, right? Anytime you you're getting a desk a, a, a number as an answer, you can check it, right? But then again, the key is going to be to not panic, right? Don't panic. Yeah, yeah, that's okay, right? As you practice, you'll get better. All right, nice. So we, we reviewed those. Make sure you do one where you have you can do it both ways. This is one you can do it both ways, right? Uh, do I like one algebraically both ways, like a square root of x and an x cubed, right? We know they meet at zero and one, right? Yes, you with me there? Let me not talk with my hands. I took a class once to, to learn to talk without using your hands, and this is what this is what I learned. I caught a fish this big. <laughs> so, you know, I like something like square root of x and then y equals x cubed kind of thing, right? Yeah, so y equals square root of x, y equals x cubed. That that one could be done both ways. You can see the upper minus lower would hit two different, right? You see that you see that rectangle? And when I'm doing that, by the way, I'm drawing every rectangle in my head. Or I'm doing this. This is what I'm really doing. I draw the rectangle, and then I move it visually in my head. Can I do that? No, I, don't. I guess I can't. But I, I, you can imagine me grabbing it and moving it and seeing that the top is always hitting one function, the bottom is always hitting another function. Right, same thing with the other way. If I'm drawing that rectangle, I want to see the right-hand side hitting one function, the left-hand side hitting the other function. In that case, I know I can do it both ways. Now, listen to this, is important. I can maybe set it up both ways, but one integral could be very, very difficult, okay? And that's, that's when you're, you're forcing yourself to do the other one, right? Um, but if I give you one, and I'm thinking about this, giving you one where you have to do, you could do it both ways and get the same answer, I will make sure both integrals are doable. I'm not going to give you one that's impossible. Like the one I, that we had the other day, I think I had arc sine squared of x dx. I don't even know if I can do that one. <laughs> I, I, it could, now listen, what's going to be the key? We're, we're going to have integrals we cannot do, okay? But at the end of the course, we're going to turn every function into a sum of polynomials, and then, of course, we can do it. And that's, that's the tough chapter, chapter 8. All right, let's take a break. Let's come back at 11. Oh, sorry, at 10. <laughs> let's come back at 10. 11 is fine, right?